Hello, everyone, and welcome to our cocktail webinar series. I'm your host, Fotis Temos, and my sidekick and co-host, Ari Kalos. Ari, Don't how ever are you? call me your sidekick ever again. All right, my cowgirl, Ari <laughs> Kalos. <laughs> What's going on, Ari? How are you? How are you, Fotis? Good, good. Another, another anticipated segment. Um, we just keep rolling out the cocktail webinars with such great feedback. And even though we've already had a... Uh, bourbon cocktail webinar not too long ago. Um, we definitely wanted to do another one because of our special guest. Uh, so with us, uh, live from North Carolina, the brand ambassador for Fistful of Bourbon, our guest, Anthony Bollinger. Welcome to the segment, Anthony. How are you? Fantastic, gentlemen. Thank you for having me. Uh, I do love your report there, man. It reminds me of my brother. <laughs> it's a little, always a little put down just to get him going. I love yeah. it. I love it. It keeps us going. I got to take you back up. I, I wanted to mention, Anthony, um, you know, you've been looking forward to this. I told you this on a phone call yesterday. Like, I've been watching your videos. Uh, I feel like I know you. You're, you're, you're this, like, crazy cowboy from down south or something, but you're really not. I'm just joking around. But, like, you guys built this really cool brand, man, and I'm super excited that you're here, and I, I can't wait to learn more. And I'm sure our uh, our viewing audience as well. Don't tell anybody I'm from Brooklyn, all right? <laughs> Straight out of Dallas or Austin or wherever. Brooklyn cowboy, I love it. That was cool. But uh, Anthony, you know, bourbon is you know as a category has always been a leading category of spirits through the years, um, and it's been again lately this turn again where bourbon is on fire, um, but. If we can just quickly really touch on, because we get these questions all the time, you know, some folks are still a little confused and a little misinformed about, you know, what bourbon really is. Could you just, before we get into it, just give us a quick breakdown, because I think the laws might have changed uh, maybe not too long ago as far as what determines a bourbon. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's a great uh, point. I mean, there's a huge misconception about, you know, American whiskey or primarily bourbon that it's got to be made in Kentucky. It has to be made a certain thing. Um, bottom line is, as far as the law and regulations are concerned, made in the continental United States, at least 51% corn in the mash. That's what the, the whiskey's made out of. Um, aged in new charred oak American barrels. Um, and then you can get more into the nuances, like, you know, it must be a minimum of 80 proof at bottling and can't be anywhere more than uh, <clears throat> distilled at 160 proof. Um, and there's a lot more little nuances there, but I think the main lesson for people to know that it doesn't have to be in Kentucky. Kentucky whiskey is amazing, but if you make, you can make a, you live in Wisconsin, you can cook up some hooch and barrel it. Doesn't matter. Nice. So <clears throat> having said that, now that things have changed, you have an interesting story personally yourself and also this concept, this, uh, this new creation. Um, how did Fistful all, how did it start? So, to get, to get involved with Fistful, you kind of think about our, our parent company, um, William Grant and Sons. So, you know, we're a Scottish family owned company and we've been distilling, making whiskey, trading barrels, doing all that stuff for over 130 years. Um, so, as far as Scotch is concerned, you know, we're one of the better uh, portfolios out there as far as family producers, you know, award winning. Um, but we wanted to get involved in American whiskey. So, we kind of took, in a way, a Scotch blender's approach to American whiskey, which is a really cool, interesting story. Um, we can get involved in that. Um, but at the end of the day, bottom line is we wanted to create an approachable whiskey for the masses that, that's what, that you could sell for a value. So, you know, under $30 a bottle um, that hits all the marks for people, majority of people are looking for um, and just out of the cabin in American whiskey. So you mentioned a, a key point blended with uh, sorry blended bourbon so this is a bourbon that's blended with how many different types of bourbons yeah so it's a blend of five straight bourbons wow so when we think about the laws and the rules so obviously each barrel must be at least 51 percent corn but in the beauty of the barrel you can do different chars you can have different match bills different maturation ages um which is amazing because when you taste this stuff i mean it hits all the marks it's got a lot of depth and dimension um, for people that don't, don't realize what straight bourbon is, that's American, that's bourbon that's aged for a minimum of two years. Okay. So kind of right out, you know, there's another great little point. Um, I don't know if there's a new law or not, but 
people think bourbon has to be made in age the minimum of a certain amount of time. You can literally put it in the barrel and throw it right out the same day and it's bourbon. As soon as it touches that barrel. Wow. I don't agree with it, but I mean, hey, that's <laughs> all love. Maybe it might, might have a chance to introduce more drinkers to bourbon, hopefully with these new approaches. Mm -hmm. um, but so you mentioned Scottish companies. So are we basically making bourbon in Scotland? Well, then we know that's illegal, right? Right. How does Scottish feel about, um, you know, because obviously they have their rules and regulations and what happens over there, but um, it's, is, it, is it all done here in the U.S.? Is it, is it yeah. partially there and partially here? So it was actually a cool process. So just to get in with, with our company, so we have you know, three uh, master distillers and blenders. Um, Brian Kinsman is the man behind Glenn Fittick. David mm -hmm. Stewart, who's a, they're both, other are all rock stars, but David Stewart, I think he just hit his 50 year mark as the master uh, distiller for uh, Balvini. And then our master uh, blender is a, a young lady named Kelsey McKickney. And she's officially the youngest master apprentice, master uh, distiller apprentice in the world right now. 27 years old, she's a Scottish girl. She's got one of the best palettes out there, I think. Um, so pretty much, we, we told them we want to get an American whiskey. Let's see what you guys can do. So they kind of did a remote learning session where they took, um, they didn't know they wanted to go with five barrels. So big new made spirit, okay? Um, pick the mash bill on it. We picked how much we wanted to char the barrel. That's like the toast, it gives a lot of flavor when you age the whiskey. And they tasted that first barrel throughout its maturation. They got to that one flavor profile, and they did another barrel. This took a few years to do, obviously. And they kept tasting it and blending it. And then when they got to the fact on their fifth barrel, when they were blending it, um, they loved the flavor profile. Because what they wanted to go for is they did a bunch of testing before they started making this or testing it out. And they asked people, you know, what do you look for in whiskey? You know, flavor profile, age statement. And they asked a big, wide array, array of people. Um, and so they knew what they were looking for. You know, we're not going for a 15, 20 year or anything like that. Um, we just wanted to make a really good approach to a whiskey. Could be an entry level whiskey or it could be someone, you know, said, man, I've been drinking whiskey uh, for a while now and, and this is one of my go-tos, you know? Nice, nice. Um, I've, I've been sipping this before this segment and I gotta say from aromas to textures and flavors, fantastic. Anything that you can kind of let our guests know what they're, what's a, what they're in for, some tasting notes or something to expect when they're about to have a glass of this bourbon. Yeah, I mean, obviously due to technology, you can always go on fistfulofbourbon.com and it'll tell you kind of the flavor profiles of all the five barrel notes. Um, but it's gonna be kind of a sweeter style uh, uh, whiskey, super balanced. Um, you're gonna get a little green leafy aromas, uh, aromas on the front end. You need a little bit of, in the, in the mid range, warm spice and nutmeg. Um, a little bit of obviously toffee. And there's a cool little um, ending finish note and I think in, that's due to one of the really high, high char barrels, uh, rye, rye backed char barrels, um, like an alligator char. That's when the barrel is really, really burnt, almost scaly. You get almost a little bit of a nice licorice, but not the bad black licorice kind. This is a really <laughs> cool, adding a little extra nuance to the, um, to the whiskey. Oh, now that nice. you mention that, I, I, can kind of, I can kind of pick that up. It's funny how when you mention it is when you can probably pick things up. Yeah, man, you, you talk to wine guys and they're like, you get a little bit of tennis ball, barnyard, farmhouse, <laughs> you know, and you get fucking anything you want. But uh, I mean, this is a uh, fucking whiskey here. You can't curse on here, right? I'm sorry. No, no, oh, you can, you, you can curse all you like. Uh, <laughs> it's all okay. good. <laughs> but, um, so we're going to do a couple of uh, recipes with you um, in a couple of minutes, right? You're going to break down for us two really good cocktails. Um, but you know, a lot of cocktails that were classics um, are coming back again. We see that Manhattans are becoming popular. Old fashions, like I've seen so many variations today of old fashions. It's blowing my mind how they're getting really creative in, in the, in the uh, cocktail world. Um, so the two that we're going to do with you today is, um, I think I have it written here. We're going to do like a Southern Lemonade. I'm not sure what I called it, but yeah, it's kind of like a lemonade. <laughs> Southern Lemonade. And then... Um, and then we have one more, right? We're doing a highball. Highball. So classically, what is, so that's another question we, we get a lot of. What is technically a highball? So highball is just whiskey and soda. Whiskey and soda. Or sparkling water. You know, anyone grew up in the 80s or 90s, you know, 
uh, with a club and soda or something like that. You just get, you know, the high ball glass, fill it equal ways up with soda and whiskey and have yourself a day. Yeah. Now, could, you, could you replace the seltzer water with like uh, actual like ginger ale or some other type of? Uh... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, there's, there's high balls out there. I mean, at the end of the day, there's not a regular, you're not going to get screamed at if you order a high ball with lemonade. You know, a high ball is just. I have a frame of life, man. That's all it is, you know, <laughs> notion. Um, I'm glad but yeah, you can flavored soda, anything like that. You can change out the whiskey for tequila, mezcal, gin. It doesn't really matter, man. It's a tall glass spirit and some sort of liquid. Great, because a lot of a lot of uh, folks have, have um, thought that a highball meant a glass. Yeah, a highball is a glass. There is a glass, yeah. but it's more to it. So it's the combination of whiskey and soda. Yeah. You got, I mean, the, the, the cocktail world is pretty insane, man. And there's a lot of arguments behind, you know, the lineage of certain things, you know, where the old fashioned came from, long drinks, short drinks, you know, yep. cobblers, all that stuff. And um, I, you know, I don't want to argue with anybody, you know. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Drink it. Excellent. So why don't we move into the demonstration process, Anthony? Can't wait. I don't know if anyone can see this, or they're just listening. So I got to make some crazy sound effects, or what? Well, we're, we're all watching now. We're gonna watch on the video for the podcast. Don't worry so much about the visual, but I I cut out any silence, so it's all seamless. Don't even worry. <laughs> I don't like now. The whiskey is going in the glass. You can hear that. <laughs> I mean, you could do um, that. You could do that if that's cool. I'm good, man. <laughs> um, I, I picked the highball because. First of all, it's a basic, simple drink, right? It's literally, you know, spirit and soda, ice, maybe a garnish. Um, and what I've been focusing on, since I've been locked in my apartment for the last six months, <laughs> is using everyday ingredients that you don't need to be, you know, uh, James Beard award-winning bartender, chef, anything like that. You don't have, you know, have to have a whole booth next to you. This is stuff that you should either have in your kitchen or you can get at the gas station, right? Nice. So I focus more on technique showcase that you can use these easy ingredients but if you build it right or you build it this way you're going to change the whole flavor profile of the drink um and it's lessons that i learned you know being a bartender for a long time and i'm going to share with you guys so awesome. highball is super cool man when you get really nerdy fuck a nerdy bartender and a cocktail <laughs> bar and you're like what's your highball spec you know, say that. <laughs> how do you make highball i'm like you know anyone worth their weight i think in a way they'll be like you know it's, it's a japanese style highball the way we do it now it's more of a ritual. You go to Japan and it's a certain amount of whiskey and then you put the ice in and then it's a certain amount of turns with the ice and the size of the cubes matter. And then you add a little bit more ice and then you add your soda and then you lift the glass. It's like a whole, it's really cool. Wow. And the main reason I do this is you've been to a bar before, you order whiskey soda, they're going to grab the bottle and the soda gun and go, right? Yeah. Boom. Tastes fine. Drink it all day. I have no problem with it. But if you build it this way, with the same ingredients, but just a different technique, it's going to taste a million times better and also different. Let's get into it. So, highball glass, doesn't matter what you got. It's like I got this from Target, I think. Um, first thing you want to do is add your ice cubes, right? I'm just using kitchen ice. But the main thing is you want to fill it only halfway. If you have big cubes, that's beautiful. Um, if you don't, it doesn't matter. Um, next important thing is the amount of whiskey. You know. I'm, I'm a spritz guy nowadays, you know, I'm not trying to get blacked out by uh, my noon. So I, I go for the long game, longevity. <laughs> so I do an ounce to an ounce and a quarter, right? I want to taste the whiskey, but I want to get hydrated at the same time, you know? I want to be able to call my mother at lunchtime and that uh, embarrass myself. <laughs> so I'm going to go an ounce and a half, ounce and a quarter. You pour that right over the ice. The reason you do it in this step is so that ice is going to slowly kind of dilute a little bit and then acclimate, um, cool down the whiskey a little bit. And then what you want to do is take your bar spoon or some sort of stirring device. And it's like just a few stirs, just to kind of get the whiskey um, uh, cooled down with the ice. But keep the spoon in there for later. Next thing you go about three quarters up with the ice. Give me one second. Moving down here, make this some, uh, some soda water. Huh. Nice. <laughs> I love the appearance. <laughs> and then this is an important thing because this for the drink you don't kill all the uh, the carbonation in the sparkling water of club soda so i take that bar spoon and i'm not pouring it down the spoon if you don't have to but just down the side of the glass semi-delicately 
Interesting. This is what really changes the texture of the drink. Up to the top. Now you just take your spoon and just lift it a little bit in the bottom just to mix those ingredients. Pull it out nice and easy. So she said, no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> so I gotta edit that shit out. The most important thing about this is the um, aromatics, the garnish. You take a like a uh, citrus peeler, a potato peeler, whatever you've got, and you want to take a nice big swath of lemon, and you just express those oils over the top of the glass in the drink and dump it in. So you're gonna get a really big, like healthy bouquet of lemon oils, a little bit of like, you know, the earthy leafy notes from the whiskey, um, just really light and effervescent. Mm -hmm. Obviously this took me a couple minutes to make, you know, you can make it in like 30 seconds at home. It just elevates the drink. It's a little ritual to make it, bring it out to your porch in the summer or any time of the year and you can just crush these all day. So Anthony, three basic steps, right? It, what we noticed is, you know, pour the thir a third of the way with ice, put your bourbon in, uh, do the, you know, you stir, put your, your other uh, remaining amount of ice, then pour in your soda. Yeah, I would say the, probably the two most important things you wanna do, you don't have to build it like I did, but I would say add your, add your ice, add your whiskey, but the most important thing is gently pour that soda in down the side of the glass. Mm. And then that garnish of lemon, you can use orange, any citrus with the oils in there with big aromatics, always on top, that'll just explode the drink. So now that you said this, now I'm going to like start paying attention to how they build. <laughs> Do it. But you froze out a little bit. Can you repeat that? I said, now I'm going to be that guy that goes and pays attention to how they're making the drink. Oh, yeah. You should. You should. Why not? Our are going to love it. I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> or, or he's going to be one or, of those or, annoying guys like, oh, this guy again. I don't or know. Or they're just going to make me bad drinks the whole night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. No, yeah, no ever mess with the staff. Cool. <laughs> I, looked, um, I looked very refreshing, very tasty. Like, uh, I, I'm real jealous right now. Yeah, I mean, listen, I'm a beer and a shot guy. That's kind of my deal. Um, I just want something quick and easy. Um, and I love this, you know, I love to drink whiskey, um, neat, but if I want a little, you know, a little hydration, you know, rip up a highball real quick. And, yeah, uh, it's just absolutely. Yeah. A little pop. Yeah. Nice. You want to go next one? Yes. Sure. So this one has a little bit more ingredients, but at the end of the day, they're very simple ingredients. And the same thing is focused on technique. So at the end of the day, we're making a lemonade, right? But we're using fresh ingredients. So anyone who's, you know, listening, you bought lemonade in the carton, tastes a certain way. If you make fresh lemonade at home, good sugar and good lemon juice, good water and ice, you shake it up. It's just, it's a, it's a, it's a game changer, right? So this is going to be just kind of a nice citrus forward um, whiskey lemonade. I think we were calling this silk pajamas. Um, mm. At the end of the day, you don't need crazy bar tools. You need some sort of pint glass and something to muddle with. Um, so start with a pint glass. We're going to add three of lemon. Boom. Two slices of orange, boom. Um, you could take a little bit of white granulated sugar or you can use simple syrup. I made a little simple syrup, just equal, equal parts white sugar and water. Cook it down a little bit, add some vodka to it, it'll last you a month. Um, depends how sweet you want it. I, I, I like things kind of drier, so like a half ounce. If you're using sugar, just take a, a tablespoon, cut it in half. Mm. And then your whiskey, this one's gonna go a little longer, so full pour, two, uh, two ounces. Once again, you can do less if you want, it does not matter, kind of, whatever kind of day you want. Take a muddler, some sort of blunt object, and just macerate it real quick to get all those juices out, all the oil out of the, the rinds, and just little technique hints here. The reason I add the whiskey in also is, you know, the alcohol pull out a lot more flavors when you're muddling it in. Um, into those rinds. Wow, it looks so good. Fresh mint. You know, I don't like muddling mint because I don't want to, you know, be talking to somebody at the bar and there's chunks of mint in my teeth that are like a lunatic. So take a little bit of a club of mint, give it a little smack, open it up, drop it in. Angostura bitters. Most people have that at home. If you yeah. don't, it's kind of a staple for all classics and modern classics, kind of your salt and pepper for cocktails. And it's a little bit of backbone, a little bit of bite. Couple dashes. Mm. Fresh, lovely ice here. Today, you don't have to drink. You can literally just put it in here and stir it around and mix it up. Um, 
The reason I shake it, I'll also do the technique. When you shake it, you're adding aeration and bubbles into it. It's all going to change the mouthfeel. It's the bottom line. Stirring a cocktail versus shaking a cocktail. Stirring, it's going to be more viscous and syrupy. Shaking, it's going to be a little lighter and airy. Big old, big old Jersey Boy shake. And I like to put this in a fun little tiki cocktail glass. <laughs> Why not? I'm not going to the beach anytime soon. <laughs> um, and then you can do two options. You can do the old just pump and dump, pour it in, or you can strain it out. I personally don't like uh, pulp in my orange juice, so I don't like pulp with fibers in my drinks. So I just take a little uh, tea strainer like this. A nice kind of autumn sunrise color. Oh, yeah. And then we're just going to top it with uh, club soda just to kind of lengthen it out, thin it out a little bit, and give a little bubbles. And then just like we garnish the highball, you know, I'm a big advocate of garnishes for a reason. You know, garnishes are add aesthetics and a cool appearance, but also it adds aromas. And we also, we all know we smell way more than we taste, right? Yeah. So, Take a lovely little bouquet of mint, slap it around the top of the glass. That's another little cool technique. This is going to give a real vibrant uh, mint um, aroma. Dump it in there, and then you got your party. That is one good looking drink. I can't see the actual liquid, but I saw the color when you were pouring it. Looks so good. This is a super easy cocktail at the end of the day, man. And if you don't have fresh fruit, Take some orange juice, take some lemonade, throw some whiskey in there, top with some sparkling water. That's all you're going to do. Oh, man. So, cheers. Cheers to you. Going back real quickly, Anthony, uh, I, saw, what, what, I saw you smack the basil. The mint. The, palm. the, the mint. mint. The mint. mint. <laughs> what's, what's behind that? So, the smack of the mint. These are, a lot of herbs have essential oils inside, right? And you need a little, kind of a little talking to to activate the oils and the aromas. Wow. Um, a little cool thing you can do at home, and this works with basil, mint, sage, a lot of herbs. You just pull it out and you smell it. And then you give it a little smack and then you smell it and it's gonna, it'll accentuate the, the smell, the aromas by like, I don't know, tenfold. I'm gonna start smacking my herbs. Beat the, beat the, beat oh the shit God. out of them. <laughs> no, that's really cool. Um... I wish I had one of those right now, but sure. <laughs> I was going to say, it looks so right. good. But it seems that lately, you know, bourbons and whiskeys can be so versatile mm -hmm. in so many different cocktails. Anywhere from uh, different types of martinis, uh, different type of mixed drinks. Um, it just, it seems to be now like this so many well cocktail lists that we were you know we we're able to see when we were pre-covid i just started to see the the extension of these cocktail lists like it was you know before you had a handful of options now there's a dozen options on a cocktail list with with whiskey and bourbons yeah it's it's pretty overwhelming um but there's a reason there's a hope and, and, and there should be a rhyme or reason behind that you know like for for classics you know Prime example, Sazerac. Okay, you need a rye whiskey for Sazerac. You wouldn't put a bourbon in there. And maybe a whiskey sour, you generally use bourbon. Like, or like a, a brown derby, you'd use bourbon. So, but at the end of the day, you should, you should trust that the bartender or the bar manager or whoever is making these cocktail lists are hopefully using the products they think show, showcases best in those drinks. Right. You know, like a lot of people you'll see fireproof, barrelproof, uh, 100 proof whiskey in their cocktails because they might be under the pressure, the higher the alcohol, the more it's going to showcase and not get buried in this. When you start mixing with a bunch of different ingredients, you might lose that nuance of the flavor of the whiskey. Um, I just like, you know, the chef using the right seasoning um, behind there. There's, you know, I don't know how many whiskeys are out there. I mean, 4,000 in America right now and different variations of those. Probably um, if not more. But uh, yeah, and back to kind of why we created this whiskey is, you know, for me, I like to drink my whiskey straight. This does not kill me. This does not burn out my palate at 90 proof. Um, gives you a nice little kick. But also you can put it in cocktails, anything you want. Simple cocktails to crazy 20 part, you know, insane modern cocktails. And it'll still showcase through. And that was a big lesson we wanted to make, big thing we wanted to make sure we did when we created this brand. Right. And I, I'm sure you probably mentioned this in the beginning of our segment, but this is, uh, this year is the first launch of Fistful. 
in this market? Yeah, so we were originally going to launch in March, and obviously, um, you know, Mother Nature said no. So uh, we relaunched in September 14th, so just about a week and a half ago. So this is brand spanking new. So new. That's awesome. Cool. And you um, guys did a great job with all the branding. I mean, I'm just going to say, if you guys haven't seen it yet, go to their website, go to their YouTube channel, go to their Instagram, and just like look at some of this uh, – the commercials they made, the videos. Look at Anthony's videos because that's the first taste I got from Anthony, and I was like, "Whoa, this is this guy's crazy." So you get you got to watch this because it's great. The, the branding you guys do is great. You get such a feel and a vibe, and and like it fits so well, and I love it. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, when you know you you, you got to do a marketing, you got to create a brand lens. Anything you do in this world now, what, what's our vibe? You know, we we weren't going to come up with some crazy backstory that. Oh, you know, uh, Uncle Jimbo found these barrels in his uh, Rick house down in, uh, in, in Louisville. Um, we're like, we want to create an approachable brand at a value. But we want to have fun with it. You know, we take our brand, ser our craft seriously. You know, we're double gold in all these awards. Um, San Francisco, um, International Spirits Competition. But if we, I, my main focus is if someone comes on our social media page, I don't want to see a bottle of whiskey next to a campfire. <laughs> I was like, you know, I have no problem with that. I was like, but that's not what I am, man. And I was like, we got to have fun. Keep this brand super irreverent. I want people to look at it and be like, what? You know? So. Well, let, 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 me, let me also interject once more. Um, check out their, their social media. But then again, check out uh, Anthony's Instagram, uh, uh, Fistful of Terry. Uh, he has some great shots in there. I went there to, to grab some shots for the promo. And I was like, wow, this looks so much fun. And your job looks freaking fun. <laughs> you know what? It was fun when I got to be on a plane and travel. Now I'm sitting in my apartment. Oh, yeah, I'm, that's... I'm joking. Now I'm having a great time. <laughs> well, well, you, you'll, you'll get there once again. Don't worry. I can't wait. <laughs> having said that, Anthony, now with what's happening in, you know, in, our, in our world, and you just launched uh, a couple weeks ago, anything you want to share with us as far as... Uh, I know like events are not happening at the moment, but is there anything else creative or virtually that Fistful is doing to kind of keep the, the, you know, the noise out there? Yeah, I mean, so one thing we did as a company with Wynn Grandsons, we created this uh, part of our Stanfast Awards. We wanted to figure out how to give back um, to the bar community. I mean, you know, I came from the bar community. A lot of our employees come from the bar community. Um, and the bar community definitely got hit, you know, and being hit, still being their face smushed down in the sand right now. So we put out some uh, charitable dollars out and donations out there to the USBG hopefully give back. Um, we've been trying to help as many um, bars that are struggling and bartenders that might be out of work lately. Sure. Um, and that's just, you know, cause we want to help these folks out, you know, we're them as well. Um, but um, as far as the uh, marketing side and, and the fun side of things, <laughs> you know, um, we got some amazing things in the works. I obviously can't talk about, um, but they're gonna, they're gonna be absolutely amazing. Um, the videos you talked about, um, we got a hold of this uh, director from Saturday Night Live named Paul, Paul Bagante. Oh, wow. And, um, we were like, Paul, hook it up, man. And so we, uh, you know, created these amazing uh, 20, 30 second videos of just um, with some, some famous comedians. And that's what you guys are talking about. And uh, just filled a really, filmed a really fun, irreverent style, wild, wild west, uh, you know. Yeah, um, it's, it totally, it totally gets you. Like, it's so like, it fits and it's real. It, like. When you talk about production value, this is like the real deal stuff. Oh yeah, man, there's real deal, real deal actors. A lot of these guys are on HBO, but it's and it's not like a goofball thing. It's like they actually yeah. are serious, but it's just it's just like like what is going on here? <laughs> but um, yeah, we're gonna be um, broadcasting off of like uh, Twitch and um, Hulu. So hopefully, you see these commercials everywhere. Um, oh, wow. You know, I, I'm not good at video games, man. Never was, but I'm thinking about maybe. Uh, YouTube and myself playing Donkey Kong from Nintendo <laughs> against 13 year olds and just giving them the work. That's it. You got to do it. <laughs> we're, we're also going to link to all the social media in, uh, in our video and, and podcast. So, uh, so yeah. the people will have access to that. They don't have to remember right off the bat. <laughs> but um, yeah, Fati, what, what, what else we got cooking over here? Um, I think we can kind of open up uh, this part of the segment with questions and comments for Anthony. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Right? Let me, um, uh, let me, let me open up the chat. 
We had a couple of questions. Let me uh, notify everybody that they could ask questions in the chat. And feel free to ask any questions. All right. Uh, what we have so far, can you add flavoring or color and still call it bourbon? Um, I think so. You can add, first of all, obviously, we don't. All of our stuff say 100% legit. Um, as far as color, col coloring, you, I don't think you can. No, I think that's uh, it's still not good. Is that right, Frank? No coloring. No caramel coloring. No, no coloring. No, yeah, you can't add any extra flavoring. Um, yeah. Prime example, like Jack Daniels. They uh, run their whiskey through um, uh, charcoal barrel, um, um, what is it, a maple barrel, maple? Uh, yeah. What the hell is it called? Maple, maple Palace. And, and that's after distillation, so it adds a little bit of flavor. Nothing wrong yeah. with it, but that the name designates it. It can't be whiskey, American bourbon. So that's, they, they consider themselves a sour mash. So. Yeah. Uh, um, cool. All right, I let me, uh, I, got, I got one more. Let me, uh, so this is personally to you. Anthony, your favorite way to drink bourbon. And I, I think you addressed that. I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, it, it, honestly, it's all about the occasion. You know, if I'm sitting in my apartment, I'll make a little highball. Um, if I'm out with my buddies in a bar, uh, whiskey and a beer. Oh, nice. But okay. I appreciate a nice cocktail. You said you like it neat. Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah, I'll just rip it. Nice. Awesome. I love it. All right, so um, one more coming in. Um, does it matter where the corn comes from? Any specific type of corn? It, I mean, it hundred percent matters to the quality of the product. Um, if you ever go on, like, you can go on YouTube and watch. You know, they're a little boring, but if you really want to learn, <laughs> you can look at the, uh, you know, the whiskey um, process when these trip, these uh, big containers, these trailers come in with their corn. Um, a lot of the, I guess, distillery, the houses with a little bit more technology in advance, um, but all that all that corn is tested. You know, for water content, density, to make sure it's all uh, of, of high quality before it even gets uh, mashed up. So the corn 100% matters. Interesting. All right. So, um, so this person says they're they're old school, old school bourbon drinker, and they're like, prices have increased so much in the last few years. Is is there any sort of reason for that? Do you know? Yeah, my rent also went up in the last couple of years, man. <laughs> Part of life. <laughs> oh, man. Um, exactly. You know, yeah, the cost of goods goes up. But, I mean, at the end of the day, man, we, we have over 100 years of experience making whiskey. And I think we're pushing this thing for, depending where you are in the country, 19 to $22. So, you talk about what goes into it, I think that's a solid value. That's an absolute yeah. good value. Like, absolute but, good value. Yeah, I mean, I mean, spirits go up. I mean, there's tariffs, there's taxes, there's insane stuff behind the scenes of, of this, uh, this liquor industry. Um, you know, the workforce, their rates go up. Um, they shouldn't fluctuate that much, but also depending where you are in this country, you know, you could buy the same bottle of whiskey or vodka, you know, for $15 in Florida down in the Panhandle. And if you're in Manhattan, it's going to cost you $39. So, I mean, I mean, you know, this... This is pretty uh, accurate for the bourbon, but it's pretty accurate for the state of our economy as well. So it's like, yeah, things go up. What can yeah. you do? And also supply and demand. You know, the rarer the stuff, the less there is. It's not fair, but they can charge more for it. And that's usually on the, 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 the retail side, which is a shame sometimes. Um, yeah. You know, I remember years ago, I was buying a bottle of Pappy uh, 23 for a chef. Um, it was like 2012. And I think at that point, you could buy it for $105 or something like that. And I couldn't find them anywhere. There was one liquor store in New York trying to sell for dollars And I was like, shame on you, man, because you're ruining it for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. And, it, you know, we, you, you, you stated earlier uh, about the marketing. Obviously, it's impossible to do a wine brand, a spirit brand, without the proper marketing. I mean, that's just, that's just the game that we play. But it, marketing goes a long way. And sometimes I feel like I've, I've, I don't do it myself, but like I'll go out, I'll be with friends and like, they'll be like, yo, this is like a hundred dollar bottle of whiskey, or this is like a hundred dollar bottle of vodka, or this is a $200 bottle of wine. I have, nothing about it makes me say, wow, I would pay 
all this money. So it's like, I feel like marketing really does affect so much about it. I, I used to do security at bars years ago, like a, over 12 years ago. And I, you know, I'd have a man, I'm like, sorry, bro, no jeans. They're like, oh man, these are hundred dollar jeans. And I was like, oh, all right, well, still you can't come in, you know, and price is, you know, obviously there's no reference between that, but um, yeah, man, it's, you know, it's all about, you know, I like to surround myself with fun people, right? You know, I appreciate all the whiskey out there, all the spirits out there, you know, from stuff that I can't afford to stuff I can. And I like to talk about American whiskey, bourbon primarily. Anyone out there plays golf, you got, you know, with 12 different clubs, you got your putter, you got your driver, you got your wedge. My whiskey cabinet is, you know, my fistful is my five iron. It's always there, it's reliable. Then I got my, you know, my 100 barrel proof. I got my drivers, I got my little delicate stuff like my putters. Just, you want to have something everything, you know? I, I, like, I like that analogy. That, that, that's a great analogy, actually. You can use that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> patent pending, Anthony Bowling. Yeah, yeah. uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so, all right. I, I don't want to say, is this person alcoholic, but is Fistful available in Nips? <laughs> <laughs> in what? Is it available as a Nip? <laughs> Not yet, man, but uh, I might come out with my own uh, RTDs ready to drink soon, you know, the highballs. <laughs> well, honestly, where there's motivation, there's a nip. So, like, you can, you can make your own. Just get a bottle. <laughs> you, need it for the, you need it for the golf course, you know, when you're on the, you know, when you're driving from hole to hole, you need some nips. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, you said nips? Nips, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I thought you were saying in a mix. I thought it was like mixed up cocktails. I was like, no, not yet, man. <laughs> that, that's why I'm like, this guy must be an alcoholic. No offense to whoever asked the question, but they were asking if it was available in a nip. It 100% is. They're called, we call them 50 mLs. They're little, I think I got some of my closet here. Uh, they're little uh, mini bottles, right? Mm -hmm. So they're not, they're not exactly fistfuls. Sorry? Fingerful. Yeah, <laughs> instead of it's fistful, it's a fingerful. I mean, this is one of, Hendrix is another one of our brands, but like the, one of these you're talking about, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we, we make, um, I think in uh, Illinois right now, we may be selling for, for 99 cents. Oh man, so, that's awesome. Magic number. Slowly they'll be, you know, like we said, we just launched. So um, hopefully, you know, if your liquor store doesn't carry it, give them, you know, yell at them and say, we want some fistful and uh, well, they should carry it. Frank, Frank, as a as a retailer, um, like how hard is it for people to get? Well, let me ask: How hard is it for people to get fistful in Massachusetts? Because that's where we're based right now. Uh, not hard at all. Oh, good. Because I'll tell you why. One reason why is Ari is because we have fistful bourbon seven fifties available on our platform in our shopping cart at UrbanWineClub.co. Oh, so, that, that's some great information, Frank. Thank you. <laughs> You forgot. Frank, do you ship to North Carolina? <laughs> um, in an undisclosed box, yes. Oh, I love it. <laughs> it's but, a private uh, box. <laughs> but uh, you know what? Um, in Massachusetts, for those that are listening in Massachusetts, uh, uh, MS Walker is the distributor, and they have inventory of it. So any liquor store or pack retail shop uh, in Massachusetts can definitely order it if they oh, have. Oh, that, that's awesome. That's awesome because I'm, um, well, I'm, I'm actually in D.C. So let me ask, is it available around the D.C. area? It is. Okay, good. good. Um, things like Drizzly Instacart, I would check that out first if you don't want to leave your house. Um, but um, that should give you the best kind of idea where it is or what stores it has. Um, you know, we just launched in, I mean, 45 markets, you know, last week. So there is a little bit of delay, um, but it should be hopefully popping up everywhere. Yeah. Oh, that's still that's still great. And you just mentioned uh, Drizzly. Like I'm seeing a lot of uh, new initiatives that a lot of brands are are doing uh, with Drizzly, which is seems very very uh, innovative and and uh, pretty cool. Yeah, I mean e-commerce, man, it's 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 growing, 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 um, and you know it's something to capitalize on, and, and especially you know it's, you, you, we have to adapt. You have to be resilient. The market's changing, and you know some people can't go out. They're not allowed. Some people don't want to go out. Um, they still want a little bit of comfort at home. So don't, don't forget about the lazy people. They, they also do not want to go out. Listen, if I never had to leave my house again, I just, just someone could feed me and, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I don't believe that Anthony, I've seen your Instagram. There's no way you're, you're a guy who likes to be out. I, I, I like that about you. And I, and I don't believe you are going to stay home <laughs> if you, if you could. <laughs> Spot on, man. I live, uh, 
you were you guys you, know, you ever heard of the phrase Jason, the, the kid's a little bit of a ham <laughs> yeah. yeah i got i got ham life tattooed on the back of my neck <laughs> <laughs> not lying to you i love it i love it and and again like i i i'm i'm suggesting to everybody and we're going to link it in all our 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 media here we're going to link to these uh instagram the fistful and his personal one. You guys got to check it out. It's so great. I was making a little promo video for you and I, I went to your Instagram and I was like, this is like a gold mine right here, a gold mine. And, and it was just fun putting it all together because like we said before, the, the branding is just on point. You guys really got a good thing. And one thing to add to that, the bourbon's really frigging good. Yeah, it, it doesn't oh, yeah. hurt. It doesn't hurt. Yeah, yeah. On a side note, the bourbon's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that definite. I mean, these drinks look amazing. Um, you, you, you guys, you guys do a good job with 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 everything that you're doing. Um, well, we look forward to working with the Fistful of Bourbon for sure. Um, I can't wait to get up there. We definitely uh, let our, our audience know that uh, this is not the last time Anthony will be with us. And when things do open up, we're definitely going to collaborate with uh with uh anthony and vicky who's also with us um uh, Hi, who's also part of the uh the, the team here we'll do some events together i'm sure definitely we'll, we'll put that together and we'll let everybody know through all of our social media for sure um ari before we kind of send off uh anthony any last minute comments that uh you've been thinking about before uh we we, we wrap it up or if maybe if he wants to say a few words well i'm just gonna say before anthony um like this was a great pleasure. I, I really, again, I'm a, I'm a marketing guy. I'm a tech and marketing guy. So like a great pleasure because we do a lot of these webinars and it's just like kind of just stiff and boring. Blah, blah, blah. Don't say that. No, no, I, I'm just saying like no offense to anybody. I'm just saying. And this, this was a great pleasure because it, you guys really do, you, you set out for something and, and you're doing it right. Well, by quick, man. <laughs> got nothing to do you guys want to hang out and talk or what yeah yeah absolutely man we gotta, we gotta do another one you uh, think up uh, a few more uh a good uh, cocktail recipes and we'll we'll get back on it and then when this whole uh, mess of a uh, year is over and and things get back to normal a hundred percent man we're gonna get, go live this yeah is man I'll, I'll take you guys to a yankee game we'll have some fun Oh, whoa, 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 here. We're Boston people. Check out some winners. Come on. No, I'm joking. Oh, joking. I, love, I love that. I love it. Ari, why don't we unmute Vicky for a couple of seconds before we end it on? Oh, I'm sorry, Vicky. Can I have you muted? Shame on you. There she is. Hello, everyone. Hi, Vicky. Oh, I have to say that I've spent the last half hour just cracking up every couple of minutes. Uh, Anthony, you were hilarious. And I have to say you breathed a breath of fresh air into my day. So thank Absolutely you. Absolutely, you did. Awesome. You're welcome. <laughs> we want to thank Vicky from, uh, from our end for helping us put these uh, uh, webinars together. Thanks to uh, your entourage. You know, this, is, this makes it possible for us. And we're always constantly looking for uh, the next best thing in the industry. So thank you, Vicky. Oh, my pleasure. Anytime, especially for for you and Ari. Well, <laughs> give me a call and I'll be happy to wrangle up any support that you need. Awesome. awesome. And and I just want to say again, Anthony, this was great. Thank you so much for the 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 brand, for the 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 personality, the the knowledge that you brought. Thank you for the recipes. You're a great host. We appreciate it and we look forward to having you again. Keep it coming, man. I love it. I love it. Shower me with that love. I love you, man. You guys are awesome, man. Cheers. I feel like we've, we've done this before. Cheers. Old friends, old friends. All right. Cheers, everybody. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Stay tuned for the video. It should be available tomorrow and the podcast as well. We will see Anthony soon, we hope, and live hopefully soon. And uh, thanks, everybody, for watching, listening, and tuning in. Thank you, and bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. And, uh, and Harry Potter has left the building. <laughs> <laughs>